Hello. Welcome everybody to day 22. This is the start of week four of our daily broadcast during this special spring time where it's we're celebrating Earth Month, right? That's what's going on. That's why we're all home. That's why we're all home, outdoors, yeah, gardening, all that kind of it thing. Froze. I'm going to turn off mine. Okay, yeah, you can start it. Yeah. I'll just try to start it over again. Okay. And anyway, so we're going to um, do our, in celebration of that, our absolutely most favorite activity, which is wildlife tracking. And that encompasses tracking and trailing animals, uh, birding. Um, Sorry. Also, uh, language of the birds. And um, we're just going to introduce a lot of those things today so that uh, tomorrow uh, we can go a little bit more in depth. Our hope is to head out to our favorite place on the river that we checked out yesterday. It was incredible, let me tell you. Some of the best tracks I've ever seen. Um, and try to follow some of those animals. Or we may, we don't know whether we're going to do that tomorrow or the following day, whereas we're going back and forth between tomorrow and the following day, heading down this way around an animal trail and trying to flesh out some uh, language of the birds so you can understand the calls and songs. Uh, birds and how to find animals that way and also how to stay safe out in nature uh, because the birds will help tell you where uh, animals are, predators are lurking. And so, uh, what to do in case of an animal encounter? Uh, really depends on the animal. <laughs> so wherever you live and wherever you go, you really have to get to know the animals that are there. That's why it's so important to get to uh, a wildlife field guide. Um, and get to know those animals and then watch YouTube videos because there are actual live encounters of animals and how they behave especially the dangerous ones um, so check out YouTube but you know don't look at them if you want to you know there's some gory stuff so uh, you really want to look at the good ones nice. yeah <laughs> and also have it be age appropriate um, and then um, so get to know the animals in your area and then think in terms of perceived versus actual risk. Okay, so here's an example. Dogs or cougars, which are more dangerous? Of course, um, some people are afraid of dogs, so they have a perceived risk that is equal to the actual risk. Um, other people, you know, if they have a dog, um, they may have less perceived risk than there is actual risk. And if you look at the statistics, how many people are killed by dogs in uh, North America every year versus how many people are killed by mountain lions, also known as cougars, also known as catamounts, also known as panthers, uh, in North America. And uh, just it, on Wikipedia, it actually has a list of every single attack that's kind of been reported, as well as the deaths. And so I won't even, uh, I'll just let you look those up because it'll be surprising if you don't know already. Um, so the perceived, the reason that the perceived risk of a mountain lion is so much larger than the ask, actual risk is because <laughs> when we go to sleep at night in mountain lion country, that's what we're worried about and thinking of. Uh, it's just all our dreams. And if you've read um, Where the Red Fern Grows, like I did, my favorite book as a child, that fear will never leave you, no matter what the statistics say. Um, and there are actual, we have actual friends that have, uh, and in some of our classes, people have come that have actually been one of those 125 or 30 attacks in the history of North America. Um, we also have friends who've lost their pets right out from under them from a mountain lion. One of our lead instructors on Vancouver Island, which a lot of them have happened on because it's weird out there. Um, Anyways, so the reason that mountain lions aren't as dangerous is because if you get to know them, and under, just like with any animal that has a risk in your area, get to know them and their language, um, mountain lions are pure predators, pretty much. And so they behave in an exact certain way. They're not omnivores. They don't feel one way one day and another the other day. Um, they pretty much behave always the same. And so um, with mountain lions, we found, I found, in encountering them, if I stare at them, they freeze. If I go, <laughs> they run. <laughs> and if I run, they, they follow and chase. Or even if I'm walking along very stealthily, they may, and I've seen this, follow to check me out. Just like they, that's basically what they do with deer. They follow a deer for about a week if they're, you know, have their established territory. 
and they know exactly his patterns and then they lay in wait usually from the ground most people think of them jumping from a tree but from the ground often so anyways look uh, do your research on mountain lions but the one animal I think we all should think about and start with in because they're kind of the most complicated uh, and there are deaths every year from bears in North America and the reason bears are so dangerous is because they're like people yeah. people are unpredictable now if you walk down the street of a city uh, or any town really um, you know, 99 out of 100 of the people will give you a nod and walk along their way. But the one out of about 100 people are a little um, off, you know. And so for them, you have to know what to do. And we're trained, trained as children and in our society of what to do. Bears are very similar. They actually, when they encounter each other and they don't want any trouble, they do similar to what we do. They, they look and then they look away. They look, acknowledge the other bear, and then they look away. They still keep their awareness on of what to see out of the corner of the eye, but then they move along their way. Now, if you stare right at a bear, oh, yeah, <laughs> then just like with a person, that's threatening. And so 99 out of 100 bears, if you do that to, they'll run off. Uh, but one out of a hundred, especially a big male or something like that, or a female that's protecting their cubs, they will not back down. They might even charge. And so go on to YouTube, look at those actual real charges that occur. And um, I won't go into it now, but there's a lot of, well, maybe in a later episode, do one animal <laughs> and how to deal with one animal at a time because it take forever talking because I want to get on to some more um, actual animal tracking so the next thing we're gonna move on to do is a oh, one little thing where I have run into uh, bears mama bears with cubs um, I think we'll do an entire bear episode okay instead of giving away some of those things that have happened to me uh, from my time as a kid in Grand Rapids, Minnesota, to being out in the wilderness here on the West Coast. Of um, course, I even have a bear story. Yeah, sure. And Kim has some great bear stories from, at least one, from search and rescue days. Yep. Uh, out in the woods. And, um... I survived. Yeah. And now, uh, mama bears usually, and of course there's a difference between grizzly bears and black bears, or American bears versus grizzly bears, should I say, um because of size and everything, but uh, mum bears are usually just protecting their young. They're not necessarily out to eat uh, a person when they're attacking, um, but uh, they might just teach you a lesson, so we'll get into that. All right, so now we're going to move on to some tracking reminders that we're going to be using. It probably will turn out to be all week because this is what we love doing. Uh, recommended books are really your elders, so that's what I was talking about. In this area, we use this. Um, by David Moskowitz, uh, rest of North America, if you want just a little handy dandy Jim Halfpenny. Um, and then your area, there's some other really good books um, written out there now. Um, just like there are for most things, used to be just birding books were good, and multiple ones that are good. And now finally wildlife tracking, animal tracking has really gotten professional, thanks in large part to Mark Elbrock and what he's brought in the last 15 years or so. Um, the other thing you want to have on hand is a knowledge of language of the birds. We're going to share that tomorrow and or the next day. Um, and so just remember to listen to the um, sounds out there. Because especially when you're tracking, a lot of times looking down or just looking out a little ways ahead of you. And it's hard to think about two or three things at a time. But you really have to be maintain awareness of the birds. Uh, so you know what might be coming from behind you or be off in the distance out ahead of you, or the animal has moved enough in that direction because the bird alarms are heading off to your right. So you may be going forward, but it may have noticed that you were following it, and so it's circling back around, and you may be able to cut them off at the pass. So we'll get into some spe spe specific <laughs> specifics of um, bird voices tomorrow, find or the next day to help you find the animals. And finally, think in terms of what John Young from the Wilderness Awareness School calls the five arts of tracking and those are the five question words who what where when and why because tracking is 
a mystery to solve. It's just like being a detective. And all you're doing is looking at the evidence and drawing a conclusion based on the evidence, not guessing a name right away. If you do that, it closes off your awareness. And so, um, who is the art of, uh, as John Young describes, the art of identifying an animal? What is the art of interpreting what the animal is doing? What, where is trailing, the art of trailing an animal? Uh, who, what, where, when? Uh, when is the art of timing and being able to understand how long ago an animal was there based on the substrate and the weather. kind of have to know your area really well to do that. And why is the art of habitat um, or ecology? If you want to go try to find an animal, you can look at over satellite images and topo maps and things like that to determine, oh, you know what, in that area, I bet you I'll find that certain kind of animal. Understand the habitat, why an animal would want to be in a certain area in the first place. Um, yeah, so while we're, we're going to use that vocabulary while we're tracking this stuff here, but the absolute most important skill of wildlife tracking is, and John Young is a, learn from his uh, original mentor, Tom Brown Jr., these skills which are the skills of awareness. They call the uh, fox walk, learning how to walk in a way that blends with nature. Um, the wide angle or splatter vision, or John Young calls it the owl eyes. And that's being able to, instead of being hyper-focused, expanding your awareness out here. So imagine everybody, I'm gonna have you do this right now if you want, if you're watching. It's just put your hands out to your side of your face and wiggle your fingers <coughs> and look straight ahead into the uh, monitor that you're watching right now and see if you can see your fingers wiggling at the same time as you're looking straight in to at me. Can you see your fingers wiggling? How about up and down? Uh, with a brim hat, it's not so good. <laughs> Better to do this, probably, for wildlife tracking so that you can hear and see all around you uh, much more easily. Does this look all right or I look too? Yeah. Anyways, we'll keep it there uh, <laughs> because we're tracking. Uh, coffee helps a lot too, by the way, if you can tell I'm very excited about track. helps you hyper-focus, but also makes you paranoid because I think it was both Tom Brown and John Young who both said in classes that I've taken from them way back in the day, paranoia is probably the best thing. Just think of a, a uh, prey item, you know, a rabbit or something. They're constantly paranoid, listening and uh, watching around them. All right, so awareness. If you really want to learn more about awareness, John Young has the great um, you know, tapes and, and uh, stories and training. And Tom Brown's Field Guide to Nature and Survival for Children. That's, in my opinion, the summary of everything great that he um, helps uh, teach. So let's go take a look at this uh, first set of tracks. Now you can see this area is a corner. And the edge of a field and forest. With a little waterway, this is actually kind of an overflow, as I described in previous um, videos, overflow of water. And so edges are the most productive areas. And of course, look at what we have oh. here. I know. Oh, those These are, are new. amazing. Yeah. These weren't here yesterday. Yeah. So Sweet. we're gonna have to look up these guys. I did not go out here today, but I assumed because we've seen these guys here utilizing oh, this yeah, path a lot one. lately. Can oh. you grab a popsicle sticks? Yeah, sure. And uh, we're gonna set up some popsicle sticks so you can see uh, what we see. And it really helps um, in determining um, somewhat the uh, art of identification but really the art of interpreting what the animal's doing, whether it's running, walking, etc. And so I'm going to set these up. Yeah, one camera, color, you, or, different colors. Oh, yeah, I'll take them all. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, uh, Kimmer, if you could move the cameras close. I'm going to first take a look <laughs> at this track right here. Okay. I'm point. I am not sure how you want me to do the cameras. Oh, just bring them up close. Okay. Up. You can even um, close up the tripod. So oh, really I'll do that. Hold on, everyone. You're going for a ride for a second. And I'll set these up. Oh, <laughs> oh fun. Okay. So I'll fix it in a minute. Sorry. Oh. My goodness, you can see the entire back of it. All right. Uh-oh. Sorry. 
just apologizing to everybody because I'm making a mess of it. No, there's oh, that's a bad idea. Here. We're going to try to separate them out with these popsicle sticks. So uh, normally I'd put them behind. Can you look at these and see if you can? Yeah. There, Is that perfect. good? Yeah, bring them even closer. Closer. So really down close here. Lift close to here. Oh. <laughs> um, Sorry. Right here is a track where there's one, two, three, four, and you can see a fifth toe that kind of gets blotted out here, but you can see the, the um, claw right there. So there's claws on all of these. Usually all a claw is is sort of like a hole because wild animals generally have really sharp claws. Um, so here's a front track of this animal that you may know because you probably have it in your yard. And then I'm going to take a green popsicle stick and you almost never get this full track. This is awesome. And it's not going the right direction, but because um, it looks like this critter turned around right here. Um, but then we've got a full track right here that's one, two, three, four, five toes. And real clear claws showing. And you, go, you can see all the way to the back of the foot. This is, is probably this the good? best. Yeah. Yeah. This looks good. Okay. This is probably the best, clearest <laughs> rear foot of this animal I've probably ever seen, which is pretty awesome. All right. Well, interestingly, this animal usually puts its um, hand next to its foot. And then the next one will be opposite, foot next to hand. Now, he's turning right here, and so it's hard to see exactly. But um, just trust me that the next setup, which is going to be the length of the animal if they're walking, this animal is about this big. And so the next ones are going to be right here, and he probably put the next track stepped right. On. As a matter of fact, I actually see a lot of dirt on here. That means this animal, these animals have been walking over this um, root right here a lot underneath the fence. And um, that's where he's going to put his next one. And, then, and the next tracks are going to be the same setup as this, which is hand next to a foot, left hand next to a right foot. And that'll be um, the next step past there. So um, I'm not going to tell you what this is yet because you may know. I want you to guess an animal with five. Who? Who? Yes, thank you. <laughs> five of toes and uh, on the front and the rear, plus five um, claws, obviously showing. And it's about. Oh, let's get that tape measure out here. You can look up in your guidebook or online. It's about, I don't add claws, two and a quarter length. This is on the front foot by about two and a half width. And then on the rear, you almost never get the entire rear, but we do in this case, is two and a quarter width by, I'm just going to do about three and a half length. So that's classic size. And I uh, really love that David Moskowitz book and the Mark Elbrock book because they put the ranges of sizes. All animals, just like humans, can be different sizes. And so if you have a book that just has one size per species, totally misses the uh, difference between male and female, young and old, all sorts of different sizes. All right, so that's one set of tracks. There's also another amazing one right here. Do you want to do that? This one? Or this one. Yeah, yeah, let's do this uh, But one. you have to tell me if you can see the people, because I, I yeah. can't. I will. Okay, come on and bring it all the way down here. Oh. By the way, the sun is over there, and so is it's nice okay? to get a... Yeah, it's probably really good. A little higher is fine. Um, so right here, we have an animal that has a really wide splaying hand. Again, five toes. One, two, three, four, five. And then we also have over here this weird crazy thumb going way out and space alien yeah space alien thumb and interestingly you can see it on that one yeah i'll show that in a second there are actually t little tiny toes going right into that other track right here let's look at this one because you can probably see those little toes a little better so again we've got this big one that had is kind of splotched out because it's the front foot which came first of course one, two, three, four, five underneath there. But the rear foot came afterwards and stepped almost right onto the front foot. And this happens all the time in this animal. You've got four little toes. Little straight toes. That kind of cup. And then a, a thumb that goes around that way on the rear foot. And it kind of cups that front foot. Kind of right lands right behind that front foot usually. And a lot of times blotches it out. And uh, that's the classic shape of a space alien. <laughs> I can sh if you can hold the cameras up, I can do it with my hand. Oh, yeah, sure. 
Just hold it right there. Okay. Just hold it right there. So you've got, here's your splayed out hand, and then there's your space alien foot. This is what they normally look like. Yep, yep. And then, of course, the next step forward, Would take a look at it exact right opposite. there. Oops, can you I see it? Oh, right there. Yep, is going to yep. be the opposite. It's a little hard to see because there's more than one, actually. Yep, step. yep. <laughs> and that uh, other animal step right with it as well. And then there's the next one. Yeah, the next one's right there, mm -hmm. which is going to be the same one before that. Okay, well, anyways. Okay, that one's my favorite. Yeah, now these are animals in... Um, in their normal walking gates. And uh, now when they run, people always think, oh, what animals gallop? Well, that's pretty much every animal when they're running. And so that's a whole different um, set of arrangement of tracks. And um, this one's the classic walking track. So I'm not gonna tell you quite yet what they are. I was thinking we could follow it. Um, Partially follow animal trail tracks by following a trail that they normally go on, and every animal is a little different, and so you have to kind of get to know that animal. Like if you're following a coyote, they're going to probably stay on the main trails, you know, animal trails. And if you're following a fox, they're probably going on smaller trails, crossing those main trails. And so we may do that out on the river tomorrow or the next day. Cool, yep. Um, but on this one, they're going to, these both these animals, especially that first one we're looking at, really love these wet easy to walk type edges so you want me to grab these and well i'll grab this yeah why don't you, want... you do the camera and sure. i'll just pack anything yeah, what do you want me to yeah. bring all this stuff all right we're going to follow to until we find another set yeah okay. um no no we don't need to bring that okay. just the books just the books okay. yeah and then uh we're going to keep following this critter you guys can see that down there until we find some other species as well Oh, there's a person. <laughs> so that's, gosh, both of them still going forward. And then I never bother, unless I'm just trying to study one little set, I never stop because I can't find one. I look out ahead. This is a really cool little intersection. Now we're coming to a spot where this animal trail crosses. There's one that goes out. There's one that goes oh, cool. right and left. And yeah. tomorrow or the next day we're going to follow the one that goes left because I know that it ends up back in another section of the woods. Anyway, this is just this a great place crazy. to kind of figure out, oh, when? Now, when is um, kind of fun be here because you can, you, say you want to find the most, you want to find this animal, you have to figure out which one is the most recent. And so it's going to be the one that has clear tracks on top of all the other ones in this case. This is kind of cool. Perfect. All right. I might have to stop here and tell people what this is because this one's so. So, this is the second one we went over. And again, we've got the rear, that alien thumb right here, your toes, cupping, stepping on behind, and cupping the front track, which was one, two, three, four, five. And so, that's the classic. Um, I'm going to show this other one over here. People can see it. So we got for photographing tracks, you really need to read right up above them. Um, same thing, space alien thumb with little tiny fingers cupping the one that it almost splotched okay, out. Maybe yeah, we should show let's the show it. Yeah. The animal and the, pic the picture. So, this really is in cool. David Moskowitz's book, Wildlife of the Pacific Northwest. There it is. So, there's the it's track. The possum. Oh, yeah, there's the possum right there. <laughs> Beautiful creature. Yep. And of course, the first one, once you pull it out, well, we're going to keep following up this direction because I would like to go to the edge of the creek because the um, creek has started to drop after it rain hasn't rained for a few days uh, and try to find some tracks on the shore. And we're going to head out there, but can you look up um, that other one that we just found and people can kind of look at that in the book too? So here we are. Out we were, we were the other day, and the place I want to go out here is where Kim um, pointed out where we finished out the other day. She was like, hey, look down there. There's a trail coming out of the... Can you head out there and we'll follow right behind you? Um, go to that spot that... Yeah, that's fine. Where you're like, oh, there's a trail coming out of the creek. And we want to go see if there's any tracks down there today. Let's take a look. 
Oh yeah. Look at that right there. Coming out of the creek, let's head down. Did you hear? Maybe uh, something slapping a tail or jumping in or something. Okay, let's take a look. This is kind of interesting. It's nice to have that very interesting stuff down here now. Oh, yeah. Can you point at stuff so people can see the... Um... Oh, oh. oh, good thing. Yeah. My boots on. Yeah. All right, well, interesting. Okay, so we've got these little... Well, all I'll say right now is that you can get um, Mark Elbrock's uh, bird tracking book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hard oh, yeah, to keep these. the birdies right here. Probably shouldn't have. You know, when we go tracking tomorrow, let's not have them on the tripods. Definitely not. Let's have them just in our hands. Yeah. But yeah, those little lines are bird tracks. Little birds. And down here we have kill deer along oh, the water. These. Look at this perfect set. And we should look I'll those have to up. measure oh, it. Look at the little are. ones. What do you think has, right what, like marsh wren sort of size? Um, yeah, it could Tracks. be well, could be a spare. We have to look those, measure that and look those up in Mark Elbrock's book. Those are yeah. I need plaster. For sure. Okay, well, let's look this at this, though. Um, you want to just take it off? Go ahead and take it off. Okay. All right. We're going to look at this track right here. That's very interesting. Um, yeah. Just for a second. All right. So now these kind of look like those tracks we were looking at with a possum because they have the small fingers. But you might notice that they're not cupping a front track. They are kind of on their own. One, two, three, four, maybe a fifth toe. Let's look at each of them and see. One, two, three, four, actually. Uh, yeah, and then we don't see that alien finger, but it's about the same size, which we should have measured. One, two, you can kind of see claws, one, two, three, four. And these are actually stepping on its front. And so a lot of times animals will, what they call direct register, and it should be straight over the top. Okay. I think we can see it like that. Um, direct register where there's a rear track in a front track. Sort of similar to what we were showing you like the opossum did, only they put their rear track kind of right behind the front track. This one is the tracks are right on top of each other, so it's a rear on a front. And the size of this track, of course we can only measure the rear here because it's direct registering, is only about an inch and a quarter at the most. Maybe, and it's of course in mud, so it's probably less inch and an eighth. And it has one, two, three, four. Now, this um, family generally has four toes in the back that show and five that show in the, excuse me. Yeah, four, <laughs> five that show in the back and four in the front. And uh, this is the rodent family. Yeah, yeah. And um, now it's coming right out of the water, as you can see here. I was wondering if there was more over there. Oh yeah, let's go We're check really it disturbed. out. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of grass in here, so it's harder to see oh, yeah. and make those out. But, oh, and then there's a big critter Ooh. over here. Oh my gosh. Now this could be the raccoon again, but it also comes yeah way back to here, so it's probably the raccoon, but it almost reminded me of the yeah, did. size of a beaver, but it's not big enough for the rear track, mm -hmm. front track maybe. But yeah, let's go back to this one, and I'm going to go with, because of habitat, and because of the number of toes, and the size, let's turn so it this way so that people can look at it going forward. Here's one a track, left tracks, front, rear on front, right, which is rear on front, lefts, rear on front. And you can see the front track claws right here that got obliterated by the rear track claws right there, and hand one, two, three, four, five toes in the back. And if you could see the front, it would only be four toes showing here as well. Like four. One, two, three, four, five, oh. right in there. And then underneath, that got obliterated was the front track. Yeah. Well, Cameron, what do you think would be um, the uh, rodent family coming out of the water of that size, about inch and a quarter? 
show you a picture. Oh, <laughs> you have it already, huh? Because you knew what we were going to find? Well, yeah. I mean, okay. I know what's going to be around here. Right. I can't see, so maybe. Okay. we got a plaster cast, though, babies. I know we, we will. Tomorrow. So, there's that there little. There it is. Oh, well, mine's, not, mine's not on. Oh. Well, anyway. Anyway, so this little guy, mm -hmm. and here are the tracks. Yeah. It's um, And those it's are tracks. Oh, let's turn it around this way, maybe. Yeah. There, can you see it now? Yeah, that's okay, much great. better. And on those, those tracks are separated so that you can see the front and the rear. The rear is right here, one, two, three, four, five, and only four showing up front. Very one, two, three, four, there, here. and one, two, three, four, five. <coughs> Sorry. Um, <coughs> yeah, all my allergens are out here. Yep. All anyway, in your so grass. It, yeah, clearly <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four. <coughs> so. It says it right there. Oh, you can't I'm see it. I'm going to take this because it's not on. <coughs> okay, well, let's head back. Um, okay. I don't know if I'll be able to sing the song. <coughs> this grass is totally getting you. I might have you. to get um, a drink of water. Mm -hmm. Good thing we're not around anybody. or They'd be just absolutely running in terror right now. Oh, and we haven't told them who the five-toed critter is, have we? I think they'll Oh, it. that's true. Yeah, let's show that. The second one that we... No, the first one that we looked at was, of course... Your raccoon. Yay, look at that cutie face. Yep. And look at it, even in this picture, you can barely see the back of mm -hmm. the foot. Rarely, rarely shows. You usually only get that middle part of the heel, or middle part of the pad, and then on the five toes. And then the front hand, of course, looks like a little front hand. And look at how they, they walk. Front next to rear, in. front next to rear, front next to rear, front next to near, rear. That's a right foot with the left hand, right hand with the left foot and the back and forth in that perfect walk. We are so lucky to have these guys like right behind our house. Can yep. you believe it? <laughs> okay, so your awesome. phone didn't quite do no, it, huh? my phone didn't All right, make well, it. let's head back up to, uh, you know what time it is, Kimmer? Um, I have to save the song for next time. Oh, okay, so we're, this is a happen. This is going to happen every time we go wildlife tracking. I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, look at this, look at that, and it's going to go over time. So I'm going to cut out the song today. Maybe tomorrow. I was going to sing my uh, original Tale of the Wolf, first song I ever completed and finished about 30 years ago. And it's, uh, oh, what was the little one? Oh, couldn't oh, read a book. Okay, yeah. Sorry, Muskrat. Hey, Christy. Muskrat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. So, opossum was alien space thumb, mm -hmm. raccoon, or wait, this was possum and possum, raccoon, and muskrat. Yeah, and interestingly, um, sometimes it's easy to mix up. Christy mentioned maybe otter. Um, can be mixed up with raccoons sometimes if it's not a perfect track because they're almost that size um, and if you can't really see the fingeriness and sometimes it looks like otter and uh, thanks Christy got it awesome <laughs> back in the um this is well as Christy knows I started really diving into wildlife tracking when uh, Christy was hanging out uh that was a long time ago uh, I still love it Still love is my favorite thing to do, Christy. <laughs> All right, should we call it a day? Yeah, All right. we should. Everybody, just remember, um, here are some reminders. Can you hold on to that? Yep. Uh, reminders. Just to inspire you to get outside, enjoy nature in your backyard with the extra benefits of free vitamin D from the sun. <laughs> Virus mitigation, um, uh, mental health, and if you want to go further, plant a garden. Um, as many people are doing for food security and something to do around the house, just even pots on your um, porch. And um, I gotta go drink some more nettle tea. I had one cup already, I'm gonna have another cup. Really hold off these, um, just something <laughs> got in my throat. I guess it really wasn't an allergy, it was something got in my throat. Maybe one of these bugs. All right, well, anyways, <laughs> um, if you like this video, um, click on the link to donate. And um, that helps keep our spring staff employed this summer while we're waiting for summer camp season to start. And But if you just have a little time, get all your friends and family to click on our YouTube channel to subscribe because we need 1,000 subscribers. We're not quite to 500 yet. And once we do that, we can broadcast live to from the field. YouTube. Yeah, from oh, the field. Yes. <laughs> It'd be so great to be able to broadcast live from yes. our phones to the field. YouTube has this crazy rule that you need 1,000 subscribers before you can do that from your phone or a tablet. Otherwise, you have to be on your computer and Wi-Fi and stuff, which you can't do on the field very easily. Um, and then um, finally, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. And we'll see you tomorrow. Everybody tomorrow. be well. Take care. 
Look forward to seeing you for some more wildlife tracking and language of the birds. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Christy. Ha, <laughs> ha,